I'm Rabbi Jay Carson. And I'm Rabbi Need Ruby Ray Carson. And, and tape, tape with Rabbi, Rabbi Doug, Doug is, is next. next. Gonna watch Rabbi Doug on the TV tonight. Forget about the network programs. Forget about all the great cable shows. There's only one thing for me on Mondays and Tuesday nights. Rabbi Doug! We're gonna see Rabbi Doug. We're gonna watch Rabbi Doug. Yeah, we're gonna watch Rabbi Doug on your TV tonight. Shalom, welcome to Taped with Rabbi Doug. I'm here at the Bernard Horwich JCC, and I'm here with uh, Jay Takath, and he is the director of the Jewish Community Relations Council in the Chicago area, part of the Jewish Federation. And we're here for a Solidarity Day with Israel, where we're going to take um, some feeds, which will come from New York, from Israel, and from all over the country, actually. What is the, uh, the whole idea of today's event, Jay? Uh, the purpose nationally was to convene over 100 communities across North America, uh, the United States and Canada, in response to this latest wave of Palestinian terror, and to send a message to one another and to our brethren in Israel that we stand with them uh, during these difficult times. And as the holiday of Passover approaches, we wish that this coming year will be one of peace and security for Israelis. What is the Jewish Community Relations Council, the JCRC, what is their connection to this event and, and with the Jewish Federation? Uh, JCRC has two roles in this community. One, we are the Knesset, if you will, the umbrella body for 47 local Jewish organizations. And the second purpose is we serve as the community relations arm for the Jewish Federation, Jewish United Fund, for the 98% of the community in Chicago that's not Jewish. Very nice. Well, this event is going to include uh, the Prime Minister of Israel, uh, senators such as Hillary Clinton from New York, uh, public figures and leaders in the Jewish communities throughout the country, and, and leaders in Israel. Um, who is the organizer? Who put this whole thing together? Two national organizations. First, the United Jewish Communities, which is the umbrella body for almost 200 federations in North America. And viewers of our show will remember when the uh, the United Jewish Communities had their uh, convention in Chicago. We had actually three episodes from that convention uh, here on the show. That's almost 18 months ago already, uh, if you can believe how fast time goes. quickly. And the second major uh, organization behind it is the Conference of Presidents of Major American Jewish Organizations, also an umbrella body of 54 national Jewish organizations. They work in close cooperation with the Israeli Foreign Ministry and the Prime Minister's Office to get the Israeli component of this important program aired. Very good. All right, Jay, I want to thank you very much. Jay Takath of the uh, Jewish Community Relations Council. Stay with us here on Taped with Rabbi Doug. We're going to take you to New York in a moment and then to Israel right here on today's show. Today's gathering here in New York and in nearly 100 <clears throat> gatherings all across the U.S. and Canada demonstrates our need to personally stand together in solidarity with the people of Israel and give voice to our anguish over the relentless terrorist acts on our brothers and sisters in Israel. For all of us here, watching the horror each day on news reports has been its own kind of pain. Seeing our dear Israeli family attacked and worrying for their safety and security has made us realize that we needed to come together in our communities and give our collective voice to mount, mounting concern and abiding support. And so I'm glad to be able to introduce someone who has added her voice to the issues facing Israel as it confronts this terror, Senator Hillary Clinton. Street 
Y. And those of you who are here with us at the Y and others who are throughout our country and indeed throughout the world. You know, just uh, three weeks ago, I was in Israel and I had an opportunity at that time to convey the support and solidarity that New Yorkers and Americans feel toward Israel, not just at this moment, but before and in many ways in the future to demonstrate clearly that we stand with Israel now and forever. And when I... When I met with the people on the streets outside Sabaro Pisa, where I went, at Hadassah Hospital, throughout Jerusalem, I conveyed the same support and solidarity that we are here demonstrating today. Similarly, when meeting with the Prime Minister, with the Defense Minister, with the Foreign Minister and government officials, I made clear that we in the United States counted on our government, the American government, to stand with Israel now and forever, just as the people of America stand with Israelis. Today, I am here not only as a United States Senator, not only as someone who has been to Israel seven times, who has tried over 20 plus years always to support the government and people of Israel, but as an American citizen with one singular message, the United States and Israel face a common threat. Make no mistake about it, the attack on the United States here in New York and at the Pentagon on September 11th comes from the same well of hatred and evil that stalks Israel. It is not possible for us to imagine in any way confronting and winning the war against terrorism here and abroad without helping Israel to win it at home. Because I believed then, as I believe now, that it is not for the United States to dictate to Israel the best way for Israel to defend itself and her people. And we, therefore, we therefore have to be ready, as we expect our allies and friends to do, to support the governments we elect. And we stand with this government of Israel. And make no mistake about it. As Israel defends herself, it does so because it is clear she has no alternative. The collapse of any effort to try to achieve a safe and secure resolution of the disputes that the Palestinians have with Israel and the ensuing violence rests solely on the shoulders of Yasser Arafat. The responsibility for the violence and the collapse of the Camp David and Taba discussions rests only with Yasser Arafat. He has failed. He has failed as a leader. He has been unable and unwilling to rein in the forces of violence and terrorism. And he leaves a trail of violated vows and deaths along a path that could have and should have led to peace and life. We know that he continues to exploit children in pursuit of his own aims, whether it is the textbooks that he permits to be used in the classrooms of the Palestinian Authority or the encouragement for young suicide bombers. The use of children to further violence and political aims is absolutely 
unforgivable and needs to be condemned as such. <laughs> and we know something else, don't we? We know that the violence permitted and encouraged by Arafat can still be ended by Arafat. If he were to choose today to renounce terrorism and other acts of violence, he could demonstrate in both English and Arabic that it is not just rhetorical support, but it is action that counts. He can and he must apprehend, prosecute, and imprison and keep in prison known terrorists. Now it is my great honor to introduce to you our next speaker. Ellie Wiesel is known to all of us and truly needs no introduction. He is for me and for so many Jews and non-Jews the conscience of the Western world. He has lived through the very worst that humankind can do to one another. He emerged from that darkness as a true voice of justice and morality. Joining us live via satellite from Florida, it is my great honor to introduce Ellie Wiesel. Thank you. 
this type of one goal to establish a Palestinian state not like Israel, but instead of Israel. Let us not forget that our first Fatah organization was founded before 1967, when the West Bank was not yet under Israeli control, and that in those days no Jew was allowed to enter the old city of Jerusalem simply to play, to play at the Western Wall, to be, to remember. Fatah terrorists waged bloody attacks then. Why not now? The butchered Jewish children are not dead. So why not now? There must be. There are modern and realistic men and women among younger Palestinians. Let them be Israel's partners in negotiations for the lasting peace. But what Arafat wants is a permanent state of revolution, fear and bloodshed, not peace. When Israel says that Arafat is not trustworthy, the facts are here to corroborate that position. Arafat is a liar. He has lied not only to Israel, but even to the President of the United States when he denied responsibility for the Iranian arms shipment, the cannon A, intercepted by Israel. Now we know that he is linked to the Al-Qaeda and is part of the international terrorist network, which targets both Israel and the United States. Just read the New York Times of today, the close link between Arafat and his movement and Iran and both have terrorist ideas and goals. But Arafat, we know that all his pledges have been false. There is no doubt that he is responsible for the suicide bombers who have murdered many Jewish men, women and children in Natalia, Tel Aviv, Khedera, Haifa, and Jerusalem, and so many other places in Israel. Ever since its independence, Israel has endured threats and attacks by armed infiltrators, saboteurs, and regular armies. But these suicide killers who target civilians, particularly young people, represent a new phenomenon, a new dimension of horror. Their obsession is not freedom, but death. Death is their passion, their means, their language. Dominated by a fanatic death wish, their behavior is an insult to life, as is the images of parents and teachers rejoicing over the death of their children. And when they target our youth, it is the future of our people they seek to destroy. Oh, I know, I pray that one day there will be peace between Israelis and Palestinians. There must be. But even then, the crimes committed by suicide killers and their mentors cannot and will not be forgiven. President Bush of this administration and Congress understand better than any other government Israel's concerns and fears and its resolve to fight terror. But public opinion is easily manipulated. And Israel has recently been isolated and singled out for criticism, especially in Europe. Nevertheless, as Jews and friends of Israel, we must stand by Israel. There may be times when one does not agree with some aspect of Israel's policy, and one may say so. But as Jews, we must never allow Israel to be alone. If we cannot diminish her 
solitude, we must at least share it and be alone with this love, like this love. That is why today we proclaim our boundless solidarity with this love and its centrality in our life. Our destiny is forever linked to his words, as is our common memory to Jerusalem. And just as his is a source of deep and vicious times for us, all of us, it also remains our reason for irresistible hope. And therefore, to our brothers, sisters, friends in Israel, we say, we are with you. We are part of you. And as we come closer to Bessar, let's simply remember that the Gaon of Vilna said, the Samach of the Chagecha that rejoice during your holidays is the most difficult in Swat to obey. And you know it now. So to me, it is going to be very difficult to rejoice. But nevertheless, we must invent joy, reinvent it, just as we must invent and reinvent hope. Without hope, humanity could be what it is. Without hope, what would our message be? And so, Chakashem is Sameh. In the best of times, Israel faces the challenge of balancing its complex domestic needs with existential security concerns. Solving urgent problems without losing sight of long-term goals is no simple matter. That's the job of Israel's Prime Minister. Prime Minister Ariel Sharon joins us now live from his office in Tel Aviv. Sending greetings from Jerusalem. The eternal and undivided capital of the Jewish people and of the state of Israel forever. We need your expression of solidarity with Israel during the difficult times we face. For the past year and a half, Israel has been fighting a war of terrorism imposed upon us by the Palestinian Authority and interior Yasser Arafat. We applaud President Bush for his courageous leadership and determination to fight terror and make this world a better and safer place to live. As we face this challenge and others, the close friendship between Israel and the United States, based on common values and interests such as freedom, liberty, and democracy, is certain to grow stronger and deeper. Israel is a peace-seeking nation. My immediate goal is to achieve a ceasefire and implement the tenant plan and the mission report to which we are committed. My government and I are committed to reaching a lasting durable peace with security, but our neighbors must recognize and accept our right to live peacefully in our own land. We appreciate your continued support. Israel and Jews in diaspora shall give you responsibility for the Jewish state. We rely on you and we need you. Aliyah remains one of our main goals and we aim to bring one million new immigrants to Israel over the next 10 years. Specifically, we are focused on increased Aliyah from Argentina, France and South Africa. Our gates are open to welcome new immigrants from North America as well. The holiday celebrating our journey from slavery to freedom. We are reminded of the many obstacles and route to real independence and peace. We have faced many challenges in Israel, but we have always prevailed. In just 54 years, we have been a modern, successful country whose greatest resource is our people. See what the Jewish people have done here. In only the last 100 years, we have distinguished ourselves in the fields of education, music, agricultural technology, industry, infrastructure, and immigration absorption. All this we did while holding a sword in one hand and building our nation with the other. The challenging times we face have revealed the strengths of our people. The solidarity of Jews in Israel and Jews in the diaspora is what makes us invincible. Our strengths 
is our unity. United, we will meet the challenges of tomorrow. United, we can achieve peace with security. United, we can make Israel the center of Jewish life for generations to come. Thank you and Chag Sameach. of Rabbi Doug. Watch him. Rabbi Doug. It's a wonderful show. Since the wake of Palestinian terror began 17 months ago, one Israeli city has been hit harder than any other. The people of Israel's capital have suffered unspeakable violence. Its mayor, Ehud Olmert, has faced enormous challenges. Mayor Ehud Olmert, what's the situation in Jerusalem right now? It's difficult, but it's better than the perception of it. Here and overseas. It's not easy, it's never been easy, it's been harder than ever before in the last 17 months, as you correctly say. But uh, I, I would like to think, and I don't think it would be accurate to say, that Jerusalem is in a standstill. Jerusalem is alive and kicking and dynamic city, and nothing will break the spirit of the people of Jerusalem, and nothing will paralyze the life of the city of Jerusalem. Well, we all talk about life going on. How do you make life go on in Jerusalem? How do you protect the people of the city so that they know that they can continue their lives? The people of Jerusalem are very experienced. They know that there are no magic formulas that can uh, stop terror once and for all overnight. It takes time. This is a hard and difficult and bitter war. And most likely it will not stop in the next few weeks or months. But the people of Jerusalem know that there is no other city for us. There is no other capital. This is the heart of our life. This is the heart of our existence. And we have to be firm and strong. Not to uh, try and artificially avoid uh, or ignore the pain that we feel, because we feel a lot of pain. But the pain should not be mistaken for weakness. We are not weak. We are strong. We know where we are and we know what we are for. And we keep going on. And we have life to live and we have our people to protect and we do our best to protect them, even though there is never an absolute protection. The problem you're facing here in Jerusalem, the problem the people of Jerusalem are facing, is the same problem faced by Israelis throughout the nation. We're wounded in a sense. How do we as a nation, how do you as a city overcome your wounds? Well, again, not in any uh, artificial way. We all know that it's now better than ever before. What is the significance of this war? All the wars that we fought in the past were in order to protect our house. But this is the only time that the war itself takes place in our houses and streets and coffee shops and restaurants such as Moment. And uh, therefore, we fight not just to protect our homes, but we fight in our homes. And the fact that we have to do it gives a lot of strength and a great uh, feeling of uh, hope that no matter how strong it will be, no matter how difficult it will be, we will overcome. Mayor Edward Homer, thank you very much for joining us here tonight. Thank you. Thanks for staying with us here on Taped with Rabbi Doug for the We Stand with Israel program, which has taken place not only here in Chicago, live from New York, live from Los Angeles, live from Florida, and live from Israel. We hope you'll be with us every week at this time here on Taped with Rabbi Doug. See you next time. Shalom.